Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of the company called 1617. They are a luxury candle supply company. You guys have seen me make candles using their gorgeous vessels and use their wax that I absolutely adore along with wicks and other supplies that they carry. Recently, they launched four new fragrance oils and they gifted me all four of those fragrance oils to sample and try out. Upon smelling the fragrance oils that they sent me, I was immediately inspired and actually thought it would be a really good time to show you how to make perfume oils. You guys have been asking me for quite some time how I make my perfume oils. Um, it's something that I usually stock and carry, although they've been out of stock for a while. But with the holiday season and the gifting season coming up, I thought this would be a great time to show you how to make perfume oils. I have sold both the traditional type perfume that you spray on with an alcohol base and these oil perfumes. And I have gone strictly to the oil perfumes because they really are a very popular seller, at least for me in my region. They're a really good option for people. They like them better than the spray on, at least in the handmade DIY community. They really like the option to have a roll on perfume oil. They're very trendy right now. They look gorgeous and they're a bit of a more natural alternative, although they are not completely natural unless you're using essential oils. They are a bit more of a natural alternative than the alcohol based spray on perfumes. So for this video today, I am going to be smelling and reviewing the fragrance oils that they sent me and just giving you my kind of first impressions and what I think I'm gonna make with each of them. And then we're gonna go ahead and make a perfume oil with one I've already previously selected. So this video is gonna be a full visual tutorial and process of how to make these gorgeous perfume oils. And if you would like my exact recipe, plus a detailed written tutorial, please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe for just one small $5 pledge. In fact, that same $5 pledge will gain you access to over two years of archived recipes. There's a ton to take advantage of over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the description box for you to take advantage of and check it all out. All right, let's make some perfume oils. Okay, so before we get started, it's important to note that when you're getting ready to make perfumes, you just want your workstation and your environment to be very clean and sterile. So here I have a pile of dried red rose botanicals and I got these from Brambleberry a while back and we're going to be using these to put into the bottom of our roller bottles. You guys may have seen these before at oh, different, different type kind of boutique style stores. You'll see these beautiful, they're very very popular right now. These roller bottles of perfumes and then they have the floating botanicals. So that's what we're going to be creating today. These roller bottles come with um, fittings to create the roll part on the top and then a cute little white lid. So I'll be showing you how to assemble all that as well. But the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and stuff some rose petals down into the bottom of this. Now it's up to you how much you want to add. I'm going to show you what I typically like to do. And I have about 25 or 26 bottles sitting out here. So this is what we're going to do. So I like to take just a pinch um, of, the perf of the rose petals and then just sort of stuff them in with my fingers first, a little bit at a time. And then if they get stuck, I have this real skinny long lab spoon that I'm just gonna use to shove down to the bottom. And that's about all I'm gonna put in in each bottle. Um, I know I've seen them sometimes where they're completely filled up, totally up to you. I like just a little bit in there because I like to see them float around. So we're just going to continue on this process until all of my bottles have roses in the bottom of them.
Okay, so now that all of our little containers have roses in them, we are ready for the next step. And this really could not be any easier. We are gonna just be weighing off our perfume base. What I really, really like about making perfumes is that it's the easiest thing to make and everybody is always super impressed by it. And if you get yourself a good fragrance that smells expensive, it really is a nice thing to make and to gift and to sell. So we are gonna be using fractionated coconut oil today as our perfume base. This adds a nice natural perfume base and there's also other good reasons to use the fractionated coconut oil. It's super lightweight, it absorbs into the skin very easily and it's crystal clear, it's not gonna add any color to your product and it has a very, very long shelf life, almost indefinite, so the perfume's gonna last a really long time. Um, on top of that, it is a natural option. You know, we're not using any alcohol or preservatives or anything like that. And it takes fragrance oil very well. So we are gonna go ahead and weigh off our fractionated coconut oil. That's gonna be our perfume base. Okay, I underestimated the container size, so I'm gonna to need to go ahead and get a bigger container. I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got all my fractionated coconut oil weighed off and in a container big enough to accommodate my entire recipe. So perfume oils are super easy, the easiest thing in the world to make. Um, we're just gonna be adding in our fragrance oil to the amount of fractionated coconut oil we have here, mixing it up and pouring it into our bottles. There are, however, a few things you need to be aware of when you're making perfume oils or any type of perfume. Each fragrance oil that you use, so we're using Florencia, you cannot just take the fragrance oil and put it directly on your skin or pour the fragrance oil into your roller bottle and use it as a perfume. This is much too concentrated as it comes. It has to be diluted down. And that goes with anything that you make with it. Lotions, soaps, um, candles, it has to be diluted down. So you actually have to look up the usage rates for perfume in particular, because you do not wanna to add too much into your perfume base because then it can be irritating or toxic to the skin. So in this case, the Florencia can be used in perfumes up to 43%. Now, I like to choose fragrance oils that can be used at high rates in perfumes because I feel like when, once it's diluted down into the fractionated coconut oil, you want a good amount of fragrance to come out of it. So the Florencia is a great choice because you can add up to 43% fragrance into your perfume base. Now, I'm not gonna be using a 43% in my perfume base, but um, I already know, I already know my ratio that I'm gonna be using for this recipe, but it's good to know that you can go up to 43% in your perfumes if you like to. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off what I like to use for this recipe as my maximum fragrance load. So all we're gonna do is just start weighing this right into the fractionated coconut oil. There we go. Get my scale out of the way. And then you're just gonna give your perfume a stir. You can use a lab spoon. I'm just using a stainless steel lab spoon. You can use a regular stainless steel spoon. And I'm just giving this a stir to combine. Now you'll notice that it goes totally clear because the fractionated coconut oil does a really, really good job of absorbing all of the fragrance oil into it.
It smells so good. So we're just giving this a good stir to make sure everything is well combined. Okay, and that'll do it on the stirring. And then the next thing you're gonna do is just go ahead and get your bottles ready and start pouring it in. So what I like about this little container in particular is it's got a lip on it and a handle. So it's gonna make pouring very easy into these little containers. So I guess you could use a tiny funnel. I do have one of those, but I actually just find it easier to pour directly into the containers. And just make sure you pour slowly and I'll show you where to stop because you are going to have to leave a little bit of space for the bottle cap, the top part. So you want to go, I'll fill it and then I'll show you. You want to go just to that lip right here and then stop. But isn't that gorgeous? I love that. I just think this is such an easy project to make and people absolutely adore them. They look gorgeous, they're trendy, they smell beautiful and expensive, and yet it is really, really one of the easiest things you could make. Okay, all of my perfume oils are filled up and so now it's time to go ahead and pop the caps on. So this can be a little bit tricky um, on your hands because they can be a little bit tight to put in. So I'll show you what I do. This is the little fitting. It goes, it has a end that goes into the bottle and you just push that down into the bottle. And then you need to take your little roller ball and fit it in snap it in and there you go and then it has another little lid that screws on top is that not the most gorgeous little thing and then at the end of this video I will show you how I package these
Alright everybody, they are all bottled up looking absolutely gorgeous. So the last thing I want to show you is just what type of label I put on this bottle and what that looks like and then possibly another packaging option for you. Alright. Alright, so we're ready to go ahead and put a label on these cute little perfume oils and I think I told you these were one ounce containers but they are actually half ounce containers. So you saw me make the perfume oil with the Florencia fragrance oil. And then I've also restocked my rose gold perfume oil and also my cocoa butter cashmere. So these are just different ways you can stylize it. These are just little chamomile flowers. And then these are pink roses versus the red roses. So all I've done is create a label using onlinelabels.com and if you're a patron you can still receive your coupon code as part of your rewards benefits to onlinelabels.com. They're my favorite label company and I just designed some one inch, I think these are actually like chapstick labels. This is a clear label made for a laser printer. You want to make sure you're using a laser printer or a waterproof type label because once oil gets on the outside of these if they're not on a laser type paper or waterproof this the ink will run so these are just little one inch like chapstick containers or chapstick labels and they are clear so i've designed it using the software on onlinelabels.com and then you just go ahead and line it up with your perfume oil Now, the reason I'm choosing a clear label is because I really like the way that the roses look floating around in the glass, and I didn't want to cover that up. And I've often thought a white ink would actually look really nice instead of the black, because the black is kind of hard to see. However, the um, white ink cartridge stuff with the laser printer is kind of complicated and really expensive. So I haven't added any white to my product line yet as far as labels are concerned. So right now they're still black, but it looks good. It's a clear label. You can still see the product, the beautiful flowers floating around. And I'll just go ahead and show you one more. little chapstick sized labels fit perfectly on these. And then let me show you what it looks like on the cocoa butter cashmere ones because that flower is a little lighter in color. But just to give you an idea of the different things you can do. And there you have it everybody. That is how you make a beautiful roll-on perfume oil. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. If it did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment or question below. Please share this video with a friend and subscribe to my channel. Catch you on the next video. Bye. Keep shining. All right, so let's go ahead and give these a smell. First, I just wanted to admire how beautiful this packaging is. This four ounce option comes in a glass bottle with black and white writing. It looks very, very upscale, beautiful. It kind of makes you feel special when you open it. That is something that the 1617 company really excels at. Their packaging is just gorgeous. They've left no stone unturned in that department. And then right away I've noticed that they've put on the usage rates and recommendations for candles, soap, and lotion, and also the flash point of the fragrance, which is super helpful when you're getting ready to make something. And so you don't have to run to your computer and look up the usage rates. Um, they're right there on the bottle. Not all companies have that on there. Also, there's a storage and safety uh, recommendations underneath of that. And then over here on the side, there are the fragrance notes, which is also super helpful. Not a lot of companies put that on here. So this first one is called Florencia. 
and the top notes are Bulgarian Rose, middle notes of White Orchid, and bottom notes of Tongan Vanilla. I'm going to go ahead and give this a smell. Wow. Really, really nice. Actually, not like any other fragrance that I've really smelled, so I, I can't really compare it to anything except that I am getting that beautiful rose top note, but it's definitely not overpowering. It's a light kind of airy fragrance, very, very well rounded out with the bottom notes of the Tongan Vanilla. Beautiful blend. I love that. Right away, I'm thinking this would be a great um, perfume oil as well as body oil, lotion, um, cold process soap probably would be good as well. So then the next one we're going to smell is called Alistair. Alistair. And it's got top notes of cypress and vetiver, middle notes of tobacco leaf, and bottom notes of sandalwood and amber grease. So I can tell you all of these notes right here on these um, fragrance notes. This is something that is very popular right now, this tobacco fragrances mixed in with other top notes. Very popular in candles and soaps right now, I've noticed, especially for men. So let me go ahead and give this a, a smell. Mmm. Yeah. So right away, I'm picking up on those top notes of cypress and then I'm getting kind of a back end of tobacco and definitely picking up on that sandalwood. This fragrance is definitely on the unisex side of things or even masculine. Would be great for a beard oil. It would be great for a men's um, shower gel or even men's lotion, beard oil, that type of thing. Very, very good. I could even see this in a candle if you like that type of fragrance. And then the third one I'm going to be smelling is called Mojave. And it's got top notes of geranium and pomelo. It's got middle notes of pink pepper and bottom notes of Palo Santo. Wow. Mojave is a very unique fragrance. It smells, I'm getting a that kind of peppery bite when I first smell it, but it's very well rounded out with that top citrusy note with the um, pomelo. The geranium, I am picking up a little bit, but more I'm getting that pomelo and pink pepper right away. And then the Palo Santo really does round this out nicely. It's a really good way to blend the Palo Santo into these fragrances. I like Palo Santo as it is, but mixed in with the, the geranium and pomelo and pink pepper, it really is a complex, it's got a lot of depth. I think if I was going to make something with this fragrance oil, right away I'm thinking candle. I think it would make a really nice neutral smelling candle. What I mean by neutral is something that everybody would probably like. It's not too fruity. It's not a bakery scent. Um, it's not too clean smelling, although it does have a nice clean note to it. I do like it. And then the last one we're going to be smelling is called Calle 23. And this one has top notes of El Dorado peach, middle notes of dark patchouli, and bottom notes of black rum. So this, to me, already sounds like something I'm really gonna like. Let me give this a smell. Wow. That is really a nice, unique fragrance. You know, I've ordered before fragrances that have that alcohol bottom note that actually were really bad and I couldn't use. This is not like that at all. This is actually a really, really good use of that alcohol note. Smells really good. I, I think you could brand this also in a way like, um, it almost has kind of a sweet cigar smell to it. To me at least, that's what it's reminding me of with the, with the black rum and then the dark patchouli but then it's got that top peach, a really, really well-rounded, unique fragrance. This is something I would definitely, definitely try out in candles. 
I think this would be a very popular candle fragrance. So what I have to say about what I've smelled so far is these are very unique options and there's probably a ton of ways you could brand your products um, with these, you know, like not calling it Kaye 23, you could call it something like, um, I don't know, but you could definitely rebrand it and, and make it sound super beautiful and I just am loving, loving the complex smells, the unique smells that I really haven't smelled from a lot of other companies. So give these a try. And today we are gonna be making our perfume oils with the Florencia because it's got that beautiful rose floral and then that Tongan vanilla. This would make a gorgeous perfume. All right, 